keep saying it. You are on the right page, you're trying. Hey guys, are we live? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm here trying to get everything going. Hi everybody. How are you today? We are about to go live across the board on all networks. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify. We are now live and streaming on all of these platforms. So tonight we're talking about, are you a risk taker? Are you a risk taker? Hey, so are you guys a risk taker? We are. That is. We're going to start, so we'll start to show in a few seconds. Please share this with everybody who may need Your it. Your show now, press 1 to hear important instructions. Your show will go live in 5 seconds. 4, 3, 2, 1. Hey, guys. Hey guys, I am Unique Wright, your DIY business coach. We are here talking about taking risk. Um, are you a risk taker or no? Like that is really what we what what the status of this conversation is. It's like, are you a risk taker? You know, as an entrepreneur. You have to be a risk taker, right? You have to take some risk out here. You have to push forward. You have to downsize your life. You have to um, disconnect from people. You have to do all kinds of things um, to accomplish being a successful entrepreneur. So the having a millionaire mindset addition, um, we're talking about that part, that risk part. Like, nobody successful can be scary. If you are scary and you're afraid to do business, if you're afraid to make decisions, if you're afraid to get your hands dirty, if you're afraid to jump off the bridge with the bungee cord, then this being an entrepreneur may not be designed for you. Does that make sense? It may not be for you. It may be, you may just need to stay at a nine to five job and work that. But if you are a risk taker, a gambler, and, and I, again, I'm not trying to tell you you have to take um, you have to take major risk, like crazy risk. But hold on one second. Maybe you don't have to take major risk, but you do have to take risk. You have to. Put yourself in those positions 
to grow your business and to grow who you are. You know what I mean? So, um, that is, that is where we are in this whole genre of a millionaire mindset. We're coming together. We're getting the last little bit of logging in together and making sure that all platforms are streaming at simultaneously at the same time. So please bear with me right now while we're working on YouTube and get a YouTube live. So are, are you guys out there risk takers? Are y'all risk takers? Are those, is that something that y'all would do? Who's a gambler? Is anybody who's watching, do they, you, do you like to gamble? Um, are you a gambler? Will you will you will you will you go to the craps machine and um, lose a couple hundred dollars? To, you know, even if you don't have it. Are you a gambler? Are you willing to take those risks? Are you willing to drive fast when you know the police are around the corner? Are you willing to do things that are not you're not supposed to do just to get it done? Are you like are are, are you a safe person? Are you somebody who's extremely safe? And what you're doing. What kind of person are you? Right? So that's what the topic is. And um, we're really, what's that other word? Curiosity. Do you have the level of curiosity to make sure that you're willing to adventure? You know, when you're an entrepreneur, you have to keep learning, you have to adventure, you have to keep, you have to keep going, you have to keep pushing yourself forward, you have to try new things. So do you have that level of curiosity to know? So the two topics tonight are risk taking and curiosity. Those are very major um, aspects of it and of doing, of being an entrepreneur is taking risk and having curiosity to see how things go, see that how things happen, see what is going to happen in in your business, in your life. So those are the two things. So we're gonna the, the the basic characteristics, we're gonna talk about those of that millionaire mindset is why do entrepreneurs have to take risk? So when you work at a job, you go to the job, they pay you a salary, um, and all you had to do is really apply at the job your biggest risk was making sure that you wore the right kind of suit and the right kind of outfit to that interview you know what i mean to make sure you were presentable to that interview and maybe you said a cocky joke that got you the job because you were more cocky than the other one but that's about the amount of risk that you are going to take being an entrepreneur i mean being a a nine to fiver right fudging your resume Ooh, you fudged your resume you know what I mean? So those are the things that you you do when you're an entrepreneur, and those are the risks that you take as an entrepreneur. So I mean, as a nine to fiver. Now, as an entrepreneur, man, we jumping off bridges with no parachutes. We jumping, we ju going on planes. We riding on the back of a motorcycle with strangers. We going on vacation with no money. Like, entrepreneurs do things that don't make a whole lot of sense to nobody else but them. Does that make sense? We're writing a check knowing we don't really have the money in the bank so that we can do what we need to do to get, to, to, to get where we're going and dealing with that account later. We are doing things like that to, to, have, to change your risk, to, to put your risk up there. It's a scare factor. Things, opportunities are presented with us. You, somebody presents you a million dollar um, deal, you are, you're like, ooh, do I want to invest 500K in this million dollar deal? Well, you know, that is the ma a major risk to put $500,000. If you have $500,000 and somebody said, hey, I have a million dollar deal. So that's half of the deal, right? So, but they'll say you'll double your money. You'll double your money if you, if you jump in this deal in, in six months. Would you take that risk? I mean, of course, you want to know the the factors of it. You want to know um, all about it and what what's what's going to happen with it and what are we doing. Those are the things you may have to know. But are you are are you willing to even try? There's some people out there who will not even 
who will not even try to take that risk, who will not even do anything to push forward to figure out if that half a million dollar to double your money in six months is a logical deal. Sometimes asking those qualifying questions are those things you have to do to make it. Now, that, now I'm not telling you to do that deal. I'm just saying that if the deal makes sense to you and, it, and it's going to work for you, then why not? Why not do the deal? You know what I mean? Why not uh, take that money, especially if you have it, and put it forward if it makes sense? Logical. Now, if they tell you, you I'll give you a million, a million dollars in six months if you invest 500K and uh, there's no track record, there's, no, there's nothing tangible involved, there's nothing... Uh, viable, this person is just a bum. If a bum on the street tells you that, would you take the deal? Now, if 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 your your business co-ed somebody who if if what is his name, um, Mark Ziegelberg, the founder of of um Facebook and 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 pay and PayPal and and um, would you take the deal if Mark Ziegelberg? Um, gave it to you if he said that because that is the thing like that was one of the biggest risks in communities He saw my he saw my space and was like, okay My space is not doing anything that it's supposed to be doing and he invested his money in this platform to grow it and made billions of dollars off of People me reaching out to strangers out there in the whole wide world or finding friends that you never talk about. Now, when, when Facebook first came out, you know how scared everybody was or how, how funny it was. Internet was like scary to a lot of people. So those are the things. Think about the person who created the internet. Think about the person, eBay, all the scams, Amazon. These are people who, who put a platform out there and made and took those risks to make a whole bunch of money to, and, and made money. And, you know, back in the day, people were like, oh, nobody's going to be shopping online like that. Nobody's going to be doing all of that. Who's going to shop online for everything? Who's going to sh who would shop online for groceries? I said all those things. And, and you know what? I buy half of my groceries online. I buy half of the toilet paper. I don't go, I, I don't even like going to the store no more. So think about how life has changed over the years. And I'm not even talking about pre-COVID. I'm talking about this happened. This was me before COVID happened. So COVID just enhanced it for, it just made it even better for all of these millionaires out there. Imagine you ordering food online. I got, I got friends who are, I want to see that cook, cook it. I want to be able to watch and prepare my food. Now you ordering it and having a whole stranger bringing it to you. You would, now, okay, so it's bad enough we had taxis, right? And you got in a car with some random dude that drove you around with, with no idea of where you were going, right? That was scary, scary thing, number one, whoever whoever created taxi cabs, right? Then we got an Uber. These mofos can call you. They got a GPS location on your butt. They know where you are when you're standing at the corner. Like, yo, that's a lot of information that they're giving you and knowing your actual location from GPS. Damn, bam, it goes back to cell phones when internet first got on the cell phones. Uh, how much risk do you think it happened? Now, they educated the people out there to take these risks. And, and shows you how, how awesome your life would be if you took this risk, right? Being that. Um, uh, being that. So you you actually have to, you actually really, really, really have to, like, pay attention to that. On that. Damn, your background, your background is tight. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. When, from here, it looked like it said light. I was like, what did he say? <laughs> But I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, so those are the risks that you have to take. Those are the things that you have to do. Those are the motive. Those are the risks when you're putting out your idea. You have to push it forward. Push it forward. People are gonna tell you no when you're an entrepreneur. People are gonna tell you your idea is stupid. Why would you want to do this? There's so much competition. There, there. Why you're not doing anything that nobody else is doing. Da, 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 da. People was like, Instagram, when Instagram came out, why would we go over to Instagram? We got Facebook. Everything's on Facebook. Now we got TikTok. All they do is sing and dance on TikTok. I'm, I'm, and, and what is TikTok is about? So we find somebody creates a video, right? 
and then it gets uploaded and we mimic the video over and over and over and over and over again in their voice. And we find this entertainment entertaining as humans, right? Would you if you if you're over if you're over 30 if somebody told you that that was going to happen 30 years ago, would you believe them? Would you even have any idea? Would you even have thought of the idea? But shoot, talk your dating, online dating. What kind of risk is that? If you online date, POF, Tinder, um, eHarmony, Christian, Craigslist, all of those, you, all of these are risk-taking as human beings. So being an entrepreneur is a whole new level of risk-taking. And, and, uh, and presenting those ideas to people out there is a risk. You know what I mean? Because you have to take that in the, in the beginning. Somebody told Facebook, that, that's stupid, that's dumb. TikTok, that's stupid, that's dumb. Pinterest, why would somebody want to pin stuff up? That's stupid, that's dumb. Google. Why would we want to have to search the internet for something? Google. Is that stupid? Why would somebody want to do that? And then we have mimics and then we have people who contact. But these are multi-billion dollar companies. You know what I mean? So those are those risks that you have to take being an entrepreneur. You have to believe in yourself so much that no matter what anybody says out there that... It, it doesn't make sense. What you're saying and what you're doing makes the most sense ever, no matter how crazy it sounds. You know what I mean? So, and, and those things will sound crazy to you in the beginning, and then they'll sound crazy to everybody else. Your ideas and your business and everything else sounds crazy to everybody else until you become a millionaire. Now, Mike Zuckerberg's girlfriend, probably when he first started on um, Facebook, was like, Good boy, why are you on a computer all the time? Why are you doing this? He might, she might not say, "Boy, that's my southern thing." You know, she, you know, you know, Chris. I think you don't need to be in front of that computer. It's gonna, it's doing something to your brain. You're frying your brain. I guarantee there was that broad that was sitting there, or her bestie, best friend that he knew that was 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 doing some mess like that. You know what I mean? And if you are an entrepreneur, somebody has told you, why would you want to do that? Why do you want to sell clothes? Everybody else sells clothes. Why do you want to sell hair? Everybody else sells hair. Why do you want to do makeup? Everybody does makeup. I don't care who does makeup. There are billions of people out here in the world that do that do the same thing over and over again. Some people are consistent with it. Some people are great with it. If everybody was great that did it, then we would all be millionaires. Hey, right? Some people take off. Some people don't stay in it long enough to be successful doing it. So how are you going to tell somebody or judge somebody about their business and about the opportunities that are being presented to them? You know what I mean? So these are the things that you have to you have to believe in yourself. Your, your self-confidence as an entrepreneur has to be so freaking high that you can walk around naked down the street and not even give a damn. Nobody, who's going to talk about you? Who's going to say something? Then your level of curiosity to even dive into some of those ventures, to dive into some of those ideas that people will do and people will, will, will say that doesn't make sense. Like sipping paint. Who would, we, who would you think would do, do that? Cheesecake milkshakes. You know what? I have a client who makes success. Good money. 200 k a year off of selling milkshakes. Cheesecake milkshakes. You know what I mean? Who, who would you think? Rappers. Now, that is a risk that doesn't make sense to me. But there are millions of rappers out here who are making money. Some of you guys make money. Some of you guys don't. But think how much of a risk that has to be for you to get up on a stage and say something that you think is profound. And you just hope that everybody else does behind you. There's so many rap songs out there that I just, I listen to the lyrics and look at the lyrics and I'm just like, are you freaking kidding me? Did y'all really make this song? Did y'all, did y'all, how, how do y'all making money off of this? It's only four words. She James Brown did, baby, 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 baby. That was the whole song. Legend. Off of that one song. I was sitting here trying to think of a song.
song and that's the first song that came out that I was just like it's only like five words in the whole freaking song how how can you how can you present that and say that how much confidence do you have to have to present that and say that what kind of mindset do you have to to put yourself out there to okay a comedian y'all out here who want to be comedians how how much how much Risk, do you have to take to stand up in front of a stage and tell a joke? Knock, knock, who's there? Bobby Brown. You know what I mean? Like, how does that, how does that work? How can y'all be comedians? How can y'all do this? Now, okay, then we got hairstylists. You gonna go play up in somebody's hair, put heat, put chemicals that you can't read what they are in somebody's hair because they said if you leave it on for 20 minutes, it does a great job. If you leave it on for 25 minutes, that person might not have no hair. So within a five-minute ratio, you can go from hair to no hair. And that is the job you take? Lies. Lies. But as an entrepreneur, you're like, well, I'm a professional and I know what I'm doing. This is why I can put these chemicals on people's scalps. Man weaves. Boom. The person who thought of a man weave. Putting, I mean, we had two pays back in the day, but they were just really bad. But the person who really thought of a man weave to lay some hair, glue some hair on somebody's scalp and make them look like they had hair. And that first guy who actually wore that mess and walked out the door. How, what kind of risk was that? How could you even, first of all, how do you talk to your homeboy? If you're a stylist, how do you talk to your homeboy and like, yo, let me glue some hair to that bald spot in your head. Can I glue some hair in there? How do you say that? How much confidence do you have to have to say that? You know what I mean? Like, that is, like, so profound. Like, these are a million, these are, I think, they are a million dollars. These are 500, then you charging somebody $500 to do it. Weave. Girls with weave. That, first of all, we're selling, it started off, they said we're selling hush hair, then it became human hair. Then it was plastic. We're selling weaves and wigs that people put on their head. How much confidence do you have to have to tell somebody, here's a pile of hair stuck to this net, and we're going to place it on your head, and you're going to walk around and think you're fabulous. And we're going to tell you you're fabulous. Now, how, how, how do you have confidence to, to tell somebody that, and you only, you're like, oh, well, and, and, and then you're the first person who's done it. You're the first person who knows. And now it's like normal. Like I got I got braids and everything else in my hair. So like like how how does that work? But when the first when weave and braids and everything else first came out, like that was like, oh, why would you do that? How you did that? Da, da, da. And you only can find certain people who would do it. So those are things. It's being an entrepreneur, those are those risks that you have to take. Those are the things that you have to to have to put out there. Sound systems, TVs. Flat screen TVs, the the whole pan, the epidemic or, or ev evolution of television. Back in the day, you got a TV. If you lived on the third floor and you had one of them big ass box TVs, it wasn't coming up to the third floor. You had to hire like six dudes and, and, and then get your neighbor to help you take this box TV up. And when you left, guess where that TV stayed? In the freaking apartment. Or you just threw it over. It depends on how big you had a patio or not. But those are things. Who who designed the big ass TV? And why? Like, who's going to carry that shit? Now we're like, who's going to move? How do you move that shit around? But those are people, for people who bought. If you're a homeowner, you buy this TV and it'll just sit in your living room. And then when the bad boy breaks, then who's going to come fix it? How do you even put this in your car? How do you even get it delivered to your house? Like, those are the things that was obvious. Like, how are you going to do these things? That is what being an entrepreneur is about. Creating the impossible things or recreating and making the impossible things so much better. Airplanes, light bulbs. I got lights. I got all this kind of stuff on me. If Thomas Edison didn't take that black man's idea, then what would, where would we be at right now? God damn it. Where would we be? You know, so, so my whole thing is, if you are going to be an entrepreneur, you better take that goddamn risk and you better run with it. Being on live, don't be scared to be on live. Don't be scared to produce a product. Think of you producing a hair product or a skin product and somebody puts it, somebody, everybody's skin's different, right? I got sensitive skin like out the mofo. So every time I touch, so something touches me that ain't real, I just be like, ah, it just, it's just bad. 
You know, women like to wear that costume jewelry. First of all, back in the day, none of us wore real fake, I mean, fake jewelry, right? Back in the day, in, 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 in 1990, you, you had to buy the gold jewelry. Then what they did was they told you that these gold prices went up. And now everybody, nobody could afford the gold jewelry unless you was a billionaire. And then now everybody walking this costume and plastic bees on their arms and shit like that. Thinking that shit is hot. Now these mofos are selling plastic bees on your arms for 40 and 20, 30, 40 dollars for plastic beads. Plastic now on your arms with, with elastic. All of that shit don't cost that much. But you buying it for forty dollars because you oh it's cute it's, it's it's fashionable. The person who 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 made who made freaking um these what do you call these these copper and bracelets that that took a, somebody they took some copper out of something and decided to make a bracelet out of it for real coppers and pipes for w w Reason why, or, or, or cars, or I don't even know where it came from and why did it, it started to exist. Pennies. They started off with pennies, right? So, this is a penny that they stretched out, made it really long. They made it into something tangible, then they cut it up. And now we have bracelets and earrings, and then now they're saying it heals us and it's powerful. Like, these are the things that people have to do the research. You have to be curiosity. Okay, we got epidemics of, 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 pan, of, 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 Shit, we can go into the coronavirus. Whoever created that darn virus was a, a, a freaking genius and a, a trillionaire right about now. Crazy sounds, but it's the truth. And then, y'all out here taking these vaccines. It has killed more people than most vaccines has ever killed. And y'all are injecting your body because they have scared you guys so much about this COVID virus that... You don't even know what to do no more. Y'all just want to go outside and play. Uh, if all I got to do is take a shot to go outside and play. How, they used to have to pay you guys as little kids to take shots. Now y'all just put injecting all kind of random shit into your body. The doctors, becoming a doctor, isn't that kind of, being a, a doctor's entrepreneur, isn't that crazy? Be, that is just, that is just like, why would you be a doctor? Now you're going to give people chemicals that you really don't know what's going in their body. You're going to, you, you are liable for telling people what is wrong with them. If you tell them the wrong thing, they can die within minutes, hours, years, days. If you give them the wrong injection, they can, they can be sitting in the corner somewhere half dead season. If you don't know how their body is going to react. They can, and, and y'all pay all this money to become doctors. Lawyers, you don't have the right story and the right level of energy putting yourself out there and telling these stories to people. How are you going to be a freaking lawyer and try to get, you know, he, you, you know your boy is a criminal, right? He shot up 10 people. They said until proven guilty, but he, he knew how to hide all the evidence and hide everything. And now you are defending this person, right? That's what you do. You are defending this person knowing the risk that you are taking to defend this person. And if he doesn't get off, he's going to be mad and want to kill you. Possibly. I mean, that's not all cases. I'm just saying. You could be do corporate law. But then that's jail time. Blue collar crime just gives you much more, just the same amount of time as white collar crime. You're just in a better prison. You know what I mean? Like, so what, how do you feel about all of these things? These are jobs. These are things that you are putting yourself out there to do as an entrepreneur. You're starting these firms. You're taking on these levels of, 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 what do you call this? Level of risk that you have out there. That is what an entrepreneur, a person who built that first house, you know, because we went from caves that was just, you just chopped up into the wood and made a hole, right? That was stable. Then we got it, you know, then we got like, we started putting clay and stuff together, making bricks and started stacking those up. What is, who's that first person who created a brick house and that bitch fell on your head, on their head? Come on, man. Or wood, or put some wood together. How do you have to, you have to be curious and have to really try to put a couple pieces of wood together to make a house for millions of people to live in, apartment complexes. So those are those things, thank you love, those are those things that you 
are doing when you are an entrepreneur, you are taking this risk, going into somebody's stranger's house to clean it. You know what I mean? Going in a stranger's house to clean their house. What if the stranger is a psycho killer? I mean, there is so many negatives we can put on entrepreneurship and we can put out there in in business in everything you you you're doing. There is so many negatives we can. But if you are an entrepreneur, you can't go in thinking about what negatives you're going to what's going to happen. Yes, you start a business, you can lose all of your money, your life, your wife, your kids. Your, your, your sanity, your time. And then we still do it again and again. And we try something else again. And we keep doing it again. Get evicted about four or five times. We got to live in the car a little while. You know, this is entrepreneurship. This is the life of being an entrepreneur. Now, there's people out there who don't know. Now, some of you guys came from money. And even if you did come from money, guys, the level of risk that you're taking, you can still lose all that money. Because once your parents die, that doesn't mean that there's more money out there. Because they're dead. They're the ones who made the money the first time. And if you don't know how to make money, and you got this trust fund, don't you know how many trust fund babies are are, are sitting are homeless after 10, 15 years of being a trust fund baby? Because nobody really taught them how to make money. But they got all this money. You know? So being an entrepreneur has that level of risk. And y'all have to be willing to take it and have that mentality to push forward regardless to how many times you fail. Being an entrepreneur, you are a, fu- you are a freaking, I won't even say the F-U-C-K word, lunatic to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to talk to everybody, all y'all out here for not being an entrepreneur. I think it's the most stupidest idea. Y'all need to get off of this and don't try to do it no more. Being an entrepreneur is crazy. The risk that y'all are taking. Yeah, I need all y'all not to be entrepreneurs so that I can be the best one. All right. I need all y'all not to be so crazy out here. Opening up a food truck how and, and making and cooking stuff for people to try your food. How can you do that? And not even know if people would like your food. You know, your family say they like your food. You know, a couple of your friends will say they like your food. But they, they always say that. They always say that. But when you got millions and thousands of people eating your food on a daily basis, how does that really, how is that not a risk? Then you got salmonella. You got contamination. You got not, but you got, you got workers that don't do shit right and burn up or undercook or recook. So now we got to watch every mofo that's cooking your chicken to make sure that the chicken is not raw or the pork is cooked all the way or whatever you are doing is done all the way. And you want to go into business with somebody on a truck to do this. This is what entrepreneurship, this is the mentality of an entrepreneur. Yes, I want to sell chicken off of a freaking truck. I'm going to fry chicken on the truck and sell it. And then, we sometimes, some of us have the audacity to sell it for outrageous prices. Some prices are cheaper, some prices are higher. But how are you going to sell, how do we sell, like, like I'm not going to name the business, but it was an old, it was an Atlanta business that shut down. They used to sell meatloaf. They used to sell meatloaf for $25 for meatloaf, mashed potato, and a freaking vegetable. $25. So you telling me ground beef ketchup and and and, and some potato mashed up and um and a vegetable, a broccoli, three pieces of broccoli is worth $25. Now, I never ate there, I never would eat there, or they're frying chicken and they're telling me it's $25 for the place because of the name that's on the building. Now, that's all they're selling it because the food was trash, but how do you have the balls, the, the agoyas to sell mashed potatoes and ground beef for $25 freaking dollars? It can't be that great. It wasn't. Never is. So these are is an entrepreneur for you to even have the audacity to put say that. Now, okay, for the people who are coming on and listening to me rant, this is I'm not saying this in a negative way. Please don't think that I'm being negative about any of this. This is all about how crazy an entrepreneur is. And you really have to have and how much confidence that we really have to have to do what we to execute our jobs, to execute our things, to do what we do. How much confidence 
that we have to have to sit there. I was a nail tech for about 10 years, still licensed. But how I'm sitting there doing people's manicure. I thought that was a safe job. But there's so many things. There are people allergic to nail polish that don't even know that they're allergic to nail polish, allergic to acetone and chemicals. People allergic don't even know, and you're touching them. Or they may, you know, all of this stuff. These are things that you're taking risk. You're applying acrylic on people's nails to make them pretty. Gel. You put them under UV light. Now they say UV light does this, and you did that's that. So everything has a risk. Every time you walk out the door, there's a risk. So being an entrepreneur is that is just that new level of risk. Putting yourself out there, putting your ideas out there, putting your energy out there, putting your thought out there makes you successful. Makes you who you are. Makes you great. Because if you don't, if you are if you are going into entrepreneurship and you want to grow and you want to be successful, um, like. You got to take those risks. You got to trust yourself. You got to really, really, really believe in yourself. So if y'all like what I'm saying, like, just give me some hearts. Give me some love. Show me out. You know, make sure y'all, you know, like this. Subscribe to it. Share it with somebody else on it. So those are the things. Please, please, please share somebody. And you know I'm crazy. You know, as a saying, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been doing this now solely by myself, without any, without a job, without a nine to five, without a real backup gig. Everything that I do is entrepreneurial for the last 10 years. I have failed. I have lost. I have done it. I have done it all. I'm still figuring stuff out. Like I am still, I have puzzles out there that I don't even have the pieces to. I'm doing stuff that I don't even know how to put together. I'm just saying, hey, this is what we're going to do today. How, so, this is what, this is the goal, and this is what we're going to do, and we're going to make this motherfucker happen. We're just going to do it. Those are the things that you have to put out there and talk to people about being an entrepreneur. Like, everybody wants to do it, and everybody thinks that this mess is so much fun, Right? Oh, be an entrepreneur. Oh, you're almost like a celebrity. You don't, you know, you can wake up when you want to. You don't even understand about us waking up when we want to. The reason why we woke up at 2 o'clock in the afternoon is because we were up until 6 in the freaking morning. The sun came up. It went back down. Or we slept for two days. Y'all think because we sleeping all day, it's something, we just doing that for the fun of it. No, baby, we're tired. We've been thinking, we've been trying to figure stuff out. Our life is not that freaking easy to keep going and to keep doing the things that we're doing. We're tired. You're getting nagging. Oh, I want to spend you guys this new boyfriend, a new girlfriend. They nagging. Hey, why can't you hang out with me? Why can't you do this? Oh, I got to go to my business. Just how you got to go to work. I got to go to my business. Well, you're a business owner. You should, you have all this free time. You think, I mean, we we still building. We haven't got to Zuckerberg status yet. And Zuckerberg still has to go to work sometime. So, he's still making deals. He's still thinking of ideas. So, why are you even, why are you questioning me about how, what I'm doing and how I'm making this money? If you're going to be in a relationship with me, deal with it. It's like kids. If I have little bad baby kids and you want to be in a relationship with me, we got you got to deal with them babies and everything going on with that and all my crazy with it. That's me with, as an entrepreneur. My my businesses are my babies now. My baby is twenty two years old. She's grown. She even got her own baby. My businesses are my babies. I have a couple babies. I got I got more babies than I have kids and business babies than I have kids. And now those are things that are that's that's the thing that works for me. Is that these are my babies, man. If I say I got to wake up in the morning and play with the baby and feed the baby and do what I got to do with the baby or stay up all night with the baby, I, this is the things that I have to do. If I got to go run off because the baby is crying, that is why I'm doing it. This is my livelihood. This is who I am. This is where I'm making it. This is business. That is being an entrepreneur. What else can you do? How else can you say it? How else can you put it? That is being an entrepreneur. So if anybody who comes into your realm that has a problem with all of that crazy that you're that you are putting out there, 
then tell him to kick rocks, yo. It's, it's okay. It's okay. You don't understand. I am, See, I had to learn. I used to try to tell people, well, you know, I have to do this, do this and explain it to them. I just be like, you know what? It's okay. I understand that you don't understand. You go to work and um, I, I'll, I'll call you. I'll call you. I'll hit you up. I'll hit you up later. I'm not talking to you no more. I don't got time. If you are dating somebody, those are the risks. Did, find, trying to find a relationship being an entrepreneur is hell. Because they don't like the way you move. They don't like the, what you say. They don't like what you do. Unless they know what an entrepreneur is about. You know what I mean? Um, if you were had a 9 to 5, you, you're, you're married, right? And you had a 9 to 5. And you're like, wife or, or husband, I'm going to quit my job and open a restaurant. And they're like, okay, baby, that sounds awesome. So when are you going to go back to work? I'm not going back to work. What you mean? Well, we got ten, we got 100000 in the savings. I'm going to use 50 of it to open the restaurant. We're going to run the restaurant. In about three to five years, we're going to double it. Now, to some people, that sounds crazy, right? To an entrepreneur, that sounds like logic. That sounds like, shoot, if we can do it in three to five years, we're, we're, we're doing great things. Now, the, life, the, the, the livelihood, the matter of that is hopefully your restaurant takes off. But that risk that you had to take half of your 401k that you worked 10 years for before to put in this little box that y'all put in this box, y'all worked it, and then, and then your restaurant closes down because of COVID. Or your business shuts down your boutique that you you now you got all this inventory now we gotta now as an entrepreneur we gotta figure out how to get rid of this inventory we gotta figure out how to get this rid of this freezer full of food so we meals on wheels we we food trucking it we doing whatever we gotta do to make it happen so that we can recoup at least break even at that point we just happy to break even fuck a profit your wife is looking at you like, baby, we don't have any money in the bank. But I went to grocery shopping and the account said negative. What is a negative? Huh? I mean, baby, there'll be money in there tomorrow. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about the money that wasn't in there. There'll be money in there tomorrow. Don't, it, it, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing, baby. So now you got that mental pressure. If you're the entrepreneur and you're, you're the provider in the house, you got that pressure. Like, oh, fuck, I got to at least get grocery money in this account. So you want to wait be up all night and, you, and, your, and your wife and your girlfriend, hey, baby, why don't you come to bed? Hey, baby, I can't come to bed right now. We need groceries tomorrow. But you really can't tell her that because she doesn't understand that that's the reason why you up all night trying to Facebook message people and Google people and find crazy deals online and, and, and sell stuff, sell things that you got had in, this, in the, in the uh, storage unit. So that you can make this money back. So that she doesn't drive you crazy. End of the story. The prior relationship is probably not going to last. And you're going to be divorced. And, and then you're going to feel bitter. But you're not going to quit your business. I know people. I will quit your relationship. Before I will quit my business. Alright. <laughs> I'm going to quit. Those are my babies man. I can't give up my babies man. Those are my babies. I love you though. Well. Well, get kisses and hugs, but in the real life of it, your business is your baby. It is what you are, and you have to take that risk, and you have to do what you need to do to make that grow and to make that develop and to be successful in it. So I am so happy you guys are out here and you're loving the things that I'm saying. We're in the moments of winding down, and talking about it if y'all have anything to say please comment below please say something um please dm me if you want to be a part of this conversation you know anytime i would always like guests on it um you can call in and be a part of this conversation um next time but that is what it's about this is about that millionaire mindset fuck getting to a million get to a thousand and then let's talk about a million. Millionaire mindset, you have to have so, you know millionaires have to take so much risk to become a millionaire. So if you want to be a millionaire, stop being scary in your business. Don't be scary, do shit. Do shit, if it breaks, pick it up, 
throw it in the trash, and do it again until it don't break. Continue to do it over and over until it doesn't break. You know, people call that insanity. In real life, it's called an entrepreneur. I'm just saying. I'm not insane. I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> ah, that's the next t-shirt. I'm going to put that on a t-shirt. T-shirt guy, t-shirt person, if y'all listening, I'm not insane. I'm an entrepreneur. So make sure you keep that curiosity going. Keep pushing towards it. Keep growing. Keep learning. Because if you do not keep learning, you will be gone. Highlight them. You will you will be gone. There will not there will be nothing for you to be talking about out there. There will be nothing for you to be saying. There's nothing for you to be doing if you don't even have that motivation and have that courage to do it. So I appreciate everybody who came on my live tonight. Please make sure you like, subscribe, DM, hit me up. If you like what I'm saying, comment below, repost, share, whatever it is. That This is all free stuff that y'all can do to help me. Like, I love to give y'all advice and help you and motivate you and to tell you about crazy things that's going on with me. I need you guys to do the same for me. So please share this with your friends. Share this with the other entrepreneurs. Share this with people who want to become entrepreneurs who may or may not have the balls. Because if your balls and your dick are not like uh, 12 feet long and your balls are not like the size of 10 pound babies, then you do not need to be an entrepreneur because those have, are the gauntas that you need to become one, okay? As, even as a girl, your, 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 your pussy need to be so tight or so big or whatever. You gotta be able to take it all. You gotta be take all the bullshit when you are becoming an entrepreneur. So, this is this is I Am Unique, right? Your DIY business coach, we're here. Like I said, like, share, pick, hit my pay, hit the link in the bios up above or down below. Hit the link, hit my website, IamUniqueRight.com. Find me on all platforms. Share this with everybody. Let, let people know about the craziness. I'll be back next Wednesday to talk a little bit more crazy. Every morning, every morning, I am going to, or every day, at least one day, I'm going to be doing a live. I'm trying to do it in the morning before 12 o'clock. You will see a live calling a motivational walk. It's on my walk. Every every day I walk about 15 miles a day, 10 to 15 miles a day, let minimum six miles a day to make sure that I am healthy and have a clear mindset because dealing with everything as an entrepreneur, you need some freedom to clear up your mind, okay? So make sure you take those times to, to rejuvenate yourself because crazy needs time to be unwind. So go on a walk, go to the gym, go for a run, go on a bike ride, whatever you do to unwind that is healthy, take the time to do it. So make sure y'all pick up a planner and pick up my book by Pookie, if y'all haven't already, to remove those people who are going to tell you no out your life. Because no is a bad word around here. We don't believe in no. We believe in do. Do. Change that N to a D. And do. <laughs> I should be a rapper. Ah! All right, guys. This is I'm Unique Right, your DIY business coach, and we're signing out. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye.